Good morning, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for our special story time at Roman's Bookstore. Today we have Brady Smith presenting Louis and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes. We'll be taking audience Hi. questions toward the end of the event. So please send us your questions by using the ask a question button at the bottom of the screen. And it, um, you can also vote for any questions you like and they'll make their way to the top. So we'll do our best to get to as many questions as we can. And also please consider purchasing today's featured book um, from Romans. You can do that by clicking the green button right below the viewer screen. It'll redirect you to our website where you can complete the checkout process. And you can do that at any time. It won't interrupt viewing. Um, it's a really fun, adorable book, so you want to get your copy at Romans. And it's also a really important and special time to support independent bookstores, um, shop early for the holiday season um, because there's lots of delays. So just keep that in mind. And without further ado, let me introduce our guest for today. Brady Smith grew up in Houston, Texas and attended college at Stephen F. Austin State University, where he graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. He has his own illustration and design company, Brady Smith Creative, and has worked as an actor on shows like Parks and Recreation and Alexa and Katie. Brady has also sold feature scripts, a television pilot, and a children's book, which he has co-authored with his wife, actress Tiffany Thiessen. He currently resides in Los Angeles with his wife, their two children, three pooches, eight chickens, and one fish. Or did you say four pooches today earlier? <laughs> yeah, we we have got gotten another pooch. We <laughs> well, thank you, Brady. Pairs. We added two more parakeets. It's a it's a farm here. Beautiful, we, yeah. Of course. Going on. <laughs> we were just talking about our um, knowledge of chickens. So, <laughs> yeah. thank you, Brady, for being with us, and to Thanks everyone at home. Me. <laughs> Please sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation. Okay, cool. Um, so I was informed I'm not going to be able to see anybody so i'm really just going to be kind of looking at myself but using my imagination that a lot of people are watching this and enjoying this and what i thought i would do just a way to get things started is i'll take a few of the characters in the new book louie and bear in the land of anything goes my first graphic novel it's uh it's 160 pages of fun silly wackiness and i love the characters i uh i created the characters and the characters are real to me i i think they're fun cool people or animals or critters or creatures whatever however you want to describe it so without further ado let me draw something for you um i've drawn my whole life when i was a kid i used to draw all the time I actually my parents have said that I've been drawing since I was old enough to actually hold a crayon. My dad would sit him, sit me on his desk and I would just draw for hours. So let's draw. First, I'm going to draw Louie, who's the main character of the book titled Louie and Bear. And Louie is a little kid and he was watching TV and he was watching a wrestling match. And then later he went out into his neighborhood, which I'll read to you in a second. Is this giving a spoiler alert? I don't want to give a spoiler alert. That looks like a tomato right now, but I'm not drawing a tomato. I'm actually drawing a person. So he has a cape and he's going to have his hand on his hip right here because that's sometimes how cool people stand. And he's going to be given a thumbs up because I heard that's what cool people do too. He's got a belt. He's wearing kind of a tank top. He's got boots. And most heroes have capes. Unless it's the movie The Incredibles. And then they get sucked into trouble on that movie. So I always like to end with the face. So I draw the body first. I don't know why. And then I draw the face. Just kind of how I do it. So I'm going to give him his nose. His eyes. He's wearing a mask. That's why it looks silly right now. And then there's his eyes. And that's Louie. Cool. Next, I'm going to draw one of the creatures from the book. And this is kind of a uh, an animal food hybrid. If you guys like pizza, you're going to really like this creature. It's a pizza duck. And it's a it's it's not a nice animal. They have to really watch out for these pizza ducks in this book. Here we go. So I'm going to draw a slice of pizza, which is basically just a triangle with crust. Okay. 
And then I'm going to draw some legs, duck legs, webbed feet. And then I'm going to draw some wings here because ducks have wings. And then I'm going to draw a hairy eyebrow, an eyeball, a bill, a duck bill with teeth. And then we're adding pepperoni, guys. And this is a pizza duck, and it flies. Next, we're going to draw one more character. Actually, we'll draw a few more characters because it's fun to draw, and hopefully you guys are enjoying this. This is another creature from the land of Louie and Bear and the land of anything goes. And it's another mixture of animals. Oh, wait, look at this. We are getting... Somebody said Pizza Duck is awesome. Well, I think you're awesome. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Do you guys have any idea what those are? They're horns. What kind of animals have horns? A lot of animals have horns. Cows have horns. Okay. Do you know what does not have horns? Bats. Bats do not have horns. But bats have wings. Do you know what kind of animal has horns and wings? We're getting funky here, people. Watch this. This is what kind of animal has horns and wings. Bat cows. That's right. And this little critter has the most delicious milk in the galaxy. Bat cow milk. One of the characters in the book, it's his favorite thing to drink. Has anybody ever had bat cow mi milk? I heard it's kind of like almond milk. I like to have almond milk in my coffee. I haven't had a chance to get bat cow milk, but I, I write about it. Okay, next. We're going to draw a couple more characters. Look at this. You know what that is? I don't either. But my kids did it. They snuck into my studio, grabbed this pad of paper, and just went crazy. And I love that. Okay, so the next character we're going to draw is the other main character of the book, Bear. Now, Bear isn't, this is a secret, isn't really a bear. He's actually a gigantic hamster. That's right. He was walking with his buddy Louie, and when they fell down the intergalactic portal, what happens is, I think I said that a minute ago, let's give Bear a thumbs up too. I'm big into thumbs up. Sometimes I do thumbs ups and I don't even realize I'm doing them. It's weird. Like when I'm drawing, sometimes my thumb will just... Sorry, it just it happens. Like it's so, it's so weird. Uh, Bear has boots. Bear's gonna be standing in the land of anything goes, where they have weird kind of pancake-shaped clouds. He's going to have on his cool superhero, like, uh, mask. There's his nose. And there's his mouth. And there's his hamster buck teeth, right? Why is this tooth chipped? Any idea? You got to read the book. It's pretty funny, actually. Sometimes when you write a book or you draw something, and it does happen all the time, but when it does, it's a gift. You crack yourself up. And the way that Bear chips his tooth, when I wrote it and then I drew it, I, I giggled to myself. And then I did one of these because I was happy with uh, what happened in the book. I thought it was silly. When I wrote Louie and Bear, I wrote it to be something that would make me smile and laugh if I was still a kid, which I think there are certain parts of me that are still very childlike. Um, my wife would agree. And I tried to write a book that would be awesome and fun for kids to read between the ages of like seven and 12 ish, 13. If you're 14, feel free to read the book too. It's all good. So this is bear and he's a gigantic hamster. Okay. And I drew him so big, we don't have room to fit anything else. So let's draw one more character and one more monster. Bear loves burritos. Now, the funny thing about this 
is Bear, being a hamster, has never had a burrito. But he just loves the idea of a burrito. I have had a burrito before, and I'm a big burrito fan. Um, look, more kids stuff. <laughs> I love that they drew all over this pad. It's awesome. Okay, so here is another character of the book, and he is a chicken, but he's not all chicken. He has a chicken head, and this is Cluck. And man, Cluck is like, Cluck's the happiest chicken on the planet. I mean, this guy is just, he's just happy to be here, always. But Cluck, back on Earth, before he got sucked into the portal, was in middle school. And he was on the wrestling team. And he was eating a bucket of chicken wings. So he was thinking about chicken. So he turned into half chicken. And the other half of them is a wrestler. But the funny thing about Cluck, should we go, should we go thumbs up or should we do something different? I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna do rock on. How's that? All right. So Cluck's like, rock on, dudes. So there's Cluck. He's in very good shape because he exercises. He's wearing a wrestling tank top. But the thing about Cluck that he's a little bit embarrassed about, but he couldn't help it, it just kind of happened. Who knew? Is he's stuck in his underwear, which is even more embarrassing because he has chicken legs. Look at that. Now, is that a zany character or what? A chicken-headed dude in underwear with chicken legs. Okay. The reason I brought burritos up a minute ago is because there's this animal. There's a creature in Louie and Bear in the land of anything goes. And he is a scary creature, but not too scary, but scary enough. And one of the things that Cluck does because he's already in the land of anything goes, and I'm, I'm just giving you little bits of the story, is that he comes up with names for animals and creatures, aliens on this planet that scare him. And what Cluck does is he gives them a funny name because his ideology is if you name something silly and it makes you laugh, then it's just kind of less scary, right? So Cluck named this creature here, a dookie pants. He named it a dookie pants. And the reason the dookie pants has uh, captured bear, I'm sorry, but I still smile when I say the word dookie pants. It just cracks me up. Is the dookie pants monster, there's these fish in the ocean and they have like a light bulb or something hanging and then other fish think that it's a little fish and they go to eat it and then the fish that's bigger catches them and eats it, right? So it's got like a little little bait at the end of its thing to lure other fish in. That's what the dookie pants has. And unfortunately for bear, the dookie pants lure is it's hard to see, but it's a burrito. So bear grabs this thing thinking he had, he's finally found a burrito and uh, he's in big trouble because the Dookie Pants has him in his clutches. Okay, here you go. So here is the one-eyed, you guys hear my dogs barking out there? That's why I put them outside because they love to bark. Most dogs do, mine especially. So there's your Dookie Pants with the burrito bait. All right. <laughs> that is enough. Imagine that. Imagine that. We got drawings on this page, too. Um, I could draw a little bit more a little bit later, but what I thought would be really fun is for me to read you guys the first chapter of Louie and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to have a sip of my coffee without bat cow milk. And now I'm ready to read. All right, here we go. Louis and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes by me. And Louis saying, what are these things? And Bear's like, I'm not sure. I could totally go for a burrito right about now. 
Once again, he's never had a burrito. He just thinks he likes burritos. Chapter one. Two wrestlers. Okay. And there, I'm going to try to scoot this forward a little bit so the book is in frame and I'm not. All right. Chapter one. Two wrestlers. Arr, they're about to wrestle. Yeah. And this guy's like, ah. And this this is the voice of the uh, of the uh, commentator for the wrestling match. It's been an impressive match, but it looks like it's finally over. There's no way that anyone can get out of that hold. Arr, flip. Wait. I can't believe it. I can't believe what I'm actually seeing. Ladies and gentlemen, we just witnessed the most amazing move in wrestling. The Sludge Hammer. Whoosh. Pow. Stay tuned for the ultimate slam down. And there's Louie. Yes. And there's his little hamster named Scooty at the moment. And he's about to eat some of the cheese puffs that Louie has dropped on the carpet. Wow, the sludge hammer. I wish I could do that. And look, Scooty's throwing that little cheese puff in his mouth. And then, oof, bonk, patooey. Louie falls off his chair, bonks his head, and makes uh, Scooty spit up the cheese puff. Cheese puff is another fun word to say, by the way. And now Louie's mom, and they're moving into their house. You can, sit, you can tell by all the moving boxes. <clears throat> Louie, honey, why don't you go outside? Try and meet some new friends. Click. She turns off the TV. Mom! I don't want to make new friends. No one's going to want to hang out with me anyway. Who would want to make friends with the new kid? Have any of you guys ever felt like that? Gone to a new school or moved and you don't know anybody yet? You're a little nervous because you want to make friends, but you haven't met any friends yet? Well, that's how Louie feels right now. All you do is sit alone indoors and stare at screens. Mom, I'm not alone. I have Scooty. Scooty's like, what's up? And then mom says, go outside. And she points outdoors. And now here's Louie and he's walking down the street and he's all bummed out because he has a little dark cloud over him. And that's how I illustrate when people are bummed out. And he's got his little hamster on a leash. And he's like, why did we have to move to Holtzville? Why do I have to meet new friends? Between you and me, Holtzville is a town, a fictitious town, named after my son, Holt. I thought he would get a big kick out of reading his name in a town called Holtzville. But he doesn't read yet, so he hasn't figured this out. That's just between us. Why do I have to meet new friends? Arr, look at that. Louis bummed out, and he sees a Frisbee laying on the street, and he's like, stupid Frisbee, and he kicks it. And... Scooty's like, yikes. We, we don't like to say words like stupid, though, right? It's not a very nice word to say. Only reason Louie said it is because he's really mad. And he's by himself. So flip or flip, the Frisbee goes over a fence. Crash. Louie's like, oh, man. And he looks over the fence. He's like, a busted flower pot. Oh, man. He goes, Scooty, we're going to be in big trouble. Do you think we could fix it? Tape or glue? Hamster spit. And now he grabs Scooty and he climbs over the fence and he walks up to the broken flower pot and he looks and not right beside it, there's a hole. He says, hey, what is this, a hole? And he scooches the flower pot over. Scooty's leaning in and they're both looking. And then right here, Louis says, whoa, check this out. It's a deep tunnel. Ha, I can't even see the bottom. Then... Whoa, what, what's happening, Scooty? Oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm being sucked inside. Ah, ah, help. And I look at Scooty. Scooty's like, what the? And then, ah, zoink. And then Scooty gets sucked in. And then, oh, no. They're falling through the air or space. We don't know. It's an intergalactic portal. Nobody's ever been through an intergalactic portal, so we're using our imagination, and now they're going through thick purple cliff walls. Ah, and they're still falling. Ah, and Scooty's looking at you going, I don't know, I don't know what's happening here, see? And then, ah, and they pass some dinosaur bones on the way down, and then, thump, right through some clouds. And Louie's like, what is going on? 
and Scooty's still like, and then Scooty, look, whoa, those dinosaurs. See, this Triceratops Rex is about to gobble on a Triceratops, and then he sees this kid in a hamster flying through the air, and he's completely like, wow, I've never seen a kid in a hamster flying through the air before. That's weird. And then, splash! That's my bubble noise. And he's going through a, an alien ocean with all these funky, weird-looking fish. Look at that. That fish has two heads. That fish has three eyeballs. That fish has some weird nose that looks like a trumpet. I don't know what that fish has going on. And then bloop, 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 bloop. he goes deeper, 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 passes a plesiosaurus. A plesiosaurus. Man, that's a fun word to say, too. All right, and then sploosh, he comes out of the water, and then ah, he's in the middle of space. Watch out. He's shooting through space, and he sees this alien and the alien's buddy in a spaceship, and that's alien language. And I don't know what exactly it says, except money, burp, 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 burp. and then Louis's like, oh man, this is gonna hurt. And then boing, 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 he nails the the uh, glass hull of the spaceship, and he's like, yep, that hurt. And then he flies more off. Ah! And then the aliens look at each other and they're like, And then all of a sudden, Patui, he shoots out of a hole on a weird planet with purple sand. Have you guys ever seen purple sand in real life? I haven't either. Boom. Oof. And Louie's laying there. And he's like, oh, my brain, it feels like scrambled eggs. Ow. And then he sits up and he's like, what? What happened? Were those real dinosaurs? Did I just bounce off an actual spaceship? Wait, is that a glove? Whoa, whose clothes are these? And look, what's what's laying behind him? All of a sudden, Louis hears, no idea, buddy. Louis's like, what? And this gigantic bear sits up with Scooty's leash around his neck. And he goes, I didn't even know you had a wrestling outfit, Louis. And Louis's like, Ah, a bear, please don't eat me. And then the bear says, wait, a bear? Ah, where's a bear? And uh, Louie's like, um. and then the bear goes, who, me? And Louie's like, uh, yeah. The bear's like, ha, wowza, look at me, I'm huge. Giant body, giant head, this is awesome. And then he goes, that's a good sound too. Listen. Oh, hold on. <gasps> Louie, I can talk. That's even more awesome. And Louie says, yeah, that's cool and all, but how do you, how do you know my name? And the bear says, Louie, don't you recognize me? I mean, come on. It's me. It's Scooty. You're totally radical pet hamster. And Louie says, Scooty? How, why, I, 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 I don't understand. And Scooty says, well, me neither, but I ain't complaining. I dig my new look. Ah, by the way, could you please help? Ugh, this baby got tight. He's points, he's pointing to the leash. Point. Ah, much better. Gracias, amigo. And now Louis says, I don't understand what's happening here. Where are we? Why is the ground purple? Why am I suddenly wearing a wrestling outfit? Why are you an enormous talking bear? Bear says, well, uh, first off, I think I'm technically still a hamster. A uh, really big, awesome hamster, might I add. Uh, secondly, we just flew over a bunch of dinosaurs through a strange ocean and then bounced off an alien spaceship. Nothing about any of this makes a bit of sense. And Louis says, Gosh, you're right. Nothing makes sense at all. And then Bear says, actually, I think we should be worried about other things right now, buddy. And then he says, oh, yeah, like what exactly? And Bear says, like whatever that thing is exactly. <laughs> Look at that big monster. It's flying right toward him. That's not a dookie pants, by the way. That's a different animal. And I'll tell you what that animal's name is in a second. And they're both like, ah! 
help it helps when I say ah like that to move the page around. It adds emphasis. <gasps> and that is whoosh, chapter one. There it is. Wow, that was fun. Um, that was the first chapter of Louie and Bear. And um, there's 11 more chapters. It's 160 pages of fun, wacky, silly, colorful illustrations like the ones that you just saw. It's my first graphic novel that I've ever written. And um, I hope you guys like it. I sure had fun working on it. It was a lot of fun. Um, Sam, do you want to yeah. open up for questions or what would you like to do? We do have some questions. And one is drawing related. If you'd like to hey. draw some more, um, someone's well, asking you, right here. <laughs> someone's asking if you can draw a picture of a monkfish. <laughs> I haven't drawn a monkfish in forever, but I would love to draw a monkfish. <laughs> Monkfishes are actually a lot of people don't know this, but. <laughs> the ugliest fish in the ocean i feel bad saying that but that's what they're they're known for is how they're not a good looking fish so when i draw a monkfish i like to draw a monkfish like this i'll give the monkfish a bandana i'll give the monkfish really long hair okay a lot of people don't know this either but monkfishes actually have hair it's crazy and now I'm going to give this monkfish three eyes. This would be a very good character for one of my Louie and Bear books. I like this idea. Whoever sent a monkfish idea in, um, good on you. All right. And now this monkfish has, has upside down teeth popping out of his mouth. And we'll give him four nostrils. And then we'll give him a beard. I'm totally making this up as I go along, guys. It uh, doesn't look like a fish yet, but I'm not done. We're going to give this monkfish some fins like this and another fin like this and make his hair a little bit curlier just for fun. And then just for more fun, let's give this monkfish a, uh, a, world, a water world wrestling belt. We'll do that. And then we'll give this monkfish some high top sneakers because in the land of anything goes, anything goes and fish don't necessarily have to look like fish. That's the fun part. You can use, you can use your imagination and make it look like whatever you want. But right now it just kind of looks like a, like a three eyed Yeti going for a jog, but I'm about to change that. How, how am I going to change that? You ask, I'm going to give it a tail, a fish tail. And I'm going to make bubbles coming out of its mouth. And then I'm going to have an octopus right here looking up at it like this. What the heck is that? Oh, that's a monkfish. All right, there you go. Um, whoever, <laughs> whoever did the monkfish request, I hope that uh, meets your standards. It's very cool. Same, I mean, I've never drawn a monkfish before. We just went, we just got all kinds of funky. <laughs> we have another question okay um, from lizzie what is the difference between creating a picture book and a graphic novel wow lizzie that is a great question um i'm gonna let my new sidekick monkfish just kind of hang out while we talk for a minute so i've actually done a few children's books or picture books um one is called you're missing it and i wrote this with my wife and then the second children's book I've done is called I'm Getting a Shark. This is about a little boy whose parents are always on the phone. And the little boy is seeing all these beautiful things at the park and stuff that you can't see if you're staring at a screen and not looking at real life. So the little boy is trying to get his parents to look up and enjoy the park. And this book is about a little girl who overhears her parents talking in the other room and she is convinced that they are talking about getting her a pet shark for her birthday. Is that the case? Probably not. However, 
You got to read the book to find out. So sorry, Lizzie got sidetracked. The difference between a doing a picture book, doing a graphic novel um, is a bunch of things. You know, a picture book usually is about 32 pages long. And a lot of the time, the illustrations are much larger and the words are a little bit less. At least that's in my opinion. Um, you know, picture books, all picture books are different, but this is how I've done mine. So these are some of the pages and you can see they're really big, colorful pages with not a lot of, not a lot of words because they're for younger readers. Graphic novel. This is my first graphic novel once again. And the difference between doing the picture book and this is that you can see there are, well, of course, the page I open to is a big illustration. And so is this, but there's a lot more words and each page has a lot more panels. They're called panels, which are the individual boxes of where the art is. So instead of 32 pages, this one is 160 pages and it's, oh my goodness gracious, it's got a lot more illustrations and a lot more words. And it's just a longer story for kids who are a little bit older, who have, uh, who can read a little bit better, have had more practice, uh, and they can read a longer book. So that's the difference. Um, it took much longer to do. Uh, obviously, a lot longer for me to draw because instead of, you know, 32-ish illustrations, I think this book has maybe a thousand, a thousand illustrations. Um, some pages will have one or two. Some pages will have nine. You multiply that times 160, you got a lot of art. So, Lizzie, I hope that answered your question. That was a great question. Yeah, and we have more time for more questions. So if anyone has any, don't be shy. Um, I have a question for you. Did your uh, children offer any ideas for Louie and the Bear, like in terms of character creation, or was that all you? It was all me. I kind of dug into my inner child self, but my kids would, would be the first to offer constructive criticism, <laughs> whether they thought it was funny or if it worked. And um, honestly, I was really open to it because, you know, that they're the audience and I wanted them to, you know, I would throw out names like, do you think um, calling a monster a cockapoop is funny? And when they would giggle, then I'd be like, yes. <laughs> and that's another spoiler alert. The the monster in the at the end of the first chapter, they discover. I'll read you this page real quick. It's funny. They discover that Cluck, the uh, chicken headed um, underwear chicken leg guy, named that monster a cockapoo. And here is. I'll just read you this page where he says, oh, man, what was that creature? And he says, oh, you mean the hideous flying dragon thingy that almost devoured you guys before I heroically saved you? Sheesh, Mr. Braggy Pants over here. Yes, what is it? It's an indigenous species to this world. I'm not sure what its real name is, but I call it a cockapoop. And now Louie and Bear are cracking up, and they're like, a cockapoop? <laughs> oh, wow, whoa. Ah, woo -hoo, woo, that's hilarious. And you can see that Louie's kind of like out of breath. He's laughing so hard. He's just like, ah, kind of like when I drew a monkfish. That was funny. I, I, I almost did the old knee slap. Wow, that was a really good knee slap. I, I, that, that's smart. It was. Love that. Um, and then he says, ah, ha, 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 uh, why a cockapoo? And this is what I was telling you guys a minute ago. Well, I find if you name something that's really scary, a funny name, it makes that thing less scary. The cockapoo is scary because all it does is eat stuff and kids, if it gets the chance, huh, that actually makes sense. And then Cluck says, now, come on, let's join the others. They're going to be so happy to see you. Just don't trip on your way out the belly button. What belly button? Oh, gross. They thought they were in a cave. They were not. Another spoiler <laughs> alert. It's a new animal, a gigantic, very nice animal that you'll find that out called a morkler. 
and they were in its belly button. It's a silly book, guys. It's very silly. <laughs> it sounds very I've fun. Never belly button before, but I drew it, <laughs> and it was silly. What Brady? What um made you go from the transition of picture book to graphic novel? Did you read graphic novels as a kid, or did you just your art aligned with it, or what brought you to? You know, I did. I read uh. You know, I read comic books as a kid. I don't know how long graphic novels for mm. young readers has really been around. I, I'm, I'm not privy to that that intel, but um, I definitely, when I was a little bit older, I read a lot of graphic novels, like uh, all of Frank Miller's stuff, Alan Moore's stuff, The Watchmen, The Dark Knight Returns, all that stuff, which isn't which isn't necessarily you know kid friendly graphic novels, but they're the graphic novels that I read when I was in my teens and I loved them. And um, I never really gave much uh, thought to doing a graphic novel on my own. Um, for the last several years, I've made my, um, I've worked as an actor here and there. Uh, and the children's book thing really kind of was a wonderful, spontaneous uh, gift where it was kind of happened by accident. My mom, was an elementary school librarian and being able to draw. And I got my degree in fine arts from college. And uh, she always wanted me to write a children's book, but I never felt like I really had the, um, the idea, you know, I, I felt like I had ideas, but it's just not, not the one and um, mm -hmm. the way you're missing it. I'm embarrassed to say came about was, I was outside pushing my son on the swing, the old one-handed push, and I was looking at my phone with the other hand, and my wife literally opened up our kitchen windows and screamed at me across the yard, you're missing it! And I was like, <laughs> boing! And I had the idea, so I went in my studio and I constructed a story, and then we ended up um, doing the book with Penguin and Penguin's been my pub publisher for all the other books. And I can't speak highly enough for them. They are fantastic people and, and really just have let me have a lot of fun making these books. So, you know, long answer to your short question, Sam is, um, that was great. <laughs> it started off with, with picture books and then, uh, had the idea for a graphic novel and was encouraged to do it. And then it kind of, just came came to light. That's cool. Yeah. I, I don't think writers have a lot of short answers for questions because we go through so much in our journeys. I mean, there's so much to it. So there there is, and I'm trying to keep it short and sweet, but you, you gotta, <laughs> you know, the the storyteller in us will just kind of keep on talking, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's great. That's what it's for. Thank you. Um, well, if anyone else has any more questions, you have time, or um, I don't know, Brady, if you want to draw some more or do a drawing challenge. I mean, I know someone already asked no, you. By that. the way, um, the person who asked you to draw the monkfish said awesome in all cap or amazing in all caps. So they loved your monkfish. I'm glad I could be for be here for you, monkfish. <laughs> um, you mentioned Sam doing a drawing challenge. And I don't know if the listeners are aware of this, but among the picture books and the graphic novel, um, a few months ago, I had this book come out, which uh, evolved from my Instagram page, which is just Brady Smith here. Um, when the pandemic started, I had the idea of, of doing a 30 second drawing challenge for whomever sent me in a DM of just the most random, silly thing that they could think of. And I had to draw it in 30 seconds or less, similar to, you know, a jogging Yeti monkfish underwater with an octopus. And I had uh, in the first, I think, five or seven days of doing it. And I ended up doing it for a hundred consecutive days, a hundred drawing challenges. And it's all on my Instagram from a few months back. Um, and they were called Random Acts of Drawness. And Penguin actually put this book out and it's full of just fun um, drawing challenges. And lessons of how to draw a comic book and it just it's it's a basically we call it the super awesome activity sketchbook it's just fun and silly and that's kind of how it evolved where you know children from 
it really turned into this neat global kind of thing where people from China, from Indonesia, from Nicaragua, from Norway would send me in a drawing challenge. And since it's all, you know, on the wonderful World Wide Web, they could watch it uh, from anywhere. So if you guys have, if you want to type in something just really silly and random, Sam, I'm going to give you the um, the wonderful job of timing it for 30 seconds. Will do. See if I can knock one out. All right. Anything you guys can think of. The, the more random and silly, the better. Up oh, here we go. Yeah, like Kangaroo with a Kite by Michael Toman. Kangaroo with a Kite. All right, ready? Make this happen. Just <laughs> hear the dogs barking. I'm actually surprised they haven't been barking more. This is impressive. <laughs> can I draw a dog Never. bark? Kangaroo with a Kite? <laughs> Whenever you start, um, I'll hit the timer. Okay, we'll just say go, and I'll I'll make it happen. All right, all right, go. Okay, and we got a kangaroo. Kangaroos have very big ears, and this kangaroo is smiling, and it's holding on to something. What's it holding on to? Well, we'll find out in a minute. But first, I'm going to draw its legs and its tail, and then its other leg. And look how happy it is. Its eyes are closed. It's smiling, and here it's holding a kite. How much time do I have left, Samantha? You have nine seconds. Nine seconds. We'll give it a heart, and then I'll give it a dog. Barking, Five, four, at the ground, three, and a crowd. Two, Done. One. That was really impressive. So here's – thank you, Sam. Here's the <laughs> thing about random acts of drawing us. They're not necessarily great drawings. Better They're than I could have done. Drawings. But you can tell what it is, right? We got a little heart. We got a kite. Got some weird oblong pancake-shaped clouds that I draw because <laughs> of – shameless plug – Louie and Barry in the land of anything goes. Um, and then I have one of my dogs barking. That turned into looking sort of like a pig. You even got a dog in there. I see the yeah, pig. I, I see a dog too. <laughs> cool. I could do some more. How much time do we have left, Sam? One else. We have about 15 minutes, okay. but we don't have to, you know, we can. So 15 minutes comes down to 30, 30 <laughs> second drawings. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a lot. That'd be a lot. <laughs> You'd have a whole new book by the end. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, wait, we, have, we have one question. Oh, here we go. Another drawing challenge from Monkfish. Can you draw Monkfish. a lizard? <laughs> Can you draw a lizard skating a half pipe? A lizard skating a half pipe? I can do that, Monkfish. All right. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Just to get the full half pipe vibe, I'm going to turn this on its side. So we have more room. Um, is there a certain trick that the lizard's doing, Mr. or Mrs. Monkfish? Is it like, uh, is he getting gnarly? Is he thrashing the gnar? That's skateboard talk. I'm learning all this because my kids just started skateboarding. Is he gleaming the cube? <laughs> I've heard that one before. I'll just draw the half pipe and then I'll just make up something. All right, here um, we go. It says he's, it's Mrs. and he's thrashing the gnar. It's Mrs. Okay. <laughs> awesome. All right, Mrs. Monkfish. A lizard half pipe thrashing the gnar. And uh, go. Okay, so this lizard is is thrashing the gnar so hard that it's got its leg here, it's got its other uh leg here, its tail here, it's holding the tip of the skateboard, and it's like this, tongue hanging out, and he's like, Yeah, we'll do another rock on thing here and the lizard's eyes he's a happy lizard we'll give him some teeth and some thing how am i doing sam you got three seconds three seconds Two, and there's my Done. <laughs> that was good thank you <laughs> mrs monkfish once again a fantastic drawing challenge thank you <laughs> we have another one from lizzie okay lizzie and monkfish you guys have have a like our popping out some good stuff here. Let's see. All right, I'm going to turn this back here. Oh wait, I don't know if it's a question or a drawing challenge. Sorry, Lizzie. What what do you got? Um, it's a it's a drawing challenge, but up is is the way to go because okay. um, Lizzie would like a giraffe decorating a Christmas tree, which I think is really cute. <laughs> that is what the kids say. Hashtag adorbs. Yeah. <laughs> okay, a giraffe 
decorating a Christmas tree, 30 seconds or less. Yep. Tell me when. All right, and go. Okay, here's the Christmas tree, and it's got a star on top, and the Christmas tree is right here. And we'll put a few decorations on it, just like this. Uh, and there's the thing at the bottom. And this giraffe is uh, got a real long neck, and it's holding the ornament in its mouth. How am I doing on time? Ten, ten seconds, nine, okay, there's eight. Long neck, so the giraffe can't use its hands because it has a long neck. And there's his feet, and there's his tail. Three, Three two, two, there's one. his hair. Look. Wow. <laughs> Once again, really <laughs> not the best drawing, but 30 seconds. But you finished, but it's completed. That I think it's that's completed, the key. right? Yeah, 30 seconds. You never know how fast 30 seconds is until you have to draw something. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. It's funny how that turns out. But uh I kind of like the fact that the neck of the giraffe is really long, so that's the only way he can reach the top of the tree. Yeah. If I had more time to think about it, I'd have to start in the giraffe's mouth. Because that's a pretty large ornament. The tree yeah. would go like this. <laughs> but I'm putting too much thought into it. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lizzie. Good challenge. We have another one from Michael. Michael. Um, okay. A Picasaurus Rex. A what? A Picas it's in the chat area. Picasaurus Rex. Picasaurus. Picasaurus? Like I don't like know. Spill, like uh like that old uh cowboy tale from back in the day. I'm waiting for an answer. I, I mean, I can make up a Picosaurus Rex. We can just make it up. <laughs> yes, Pecos Bill. I'm trying to remember Pecos Bill. I remember I grew up in Texas, and uh, I think Pecos Bill was a cowboy. I'm. I is that right, Michael? Yeah. Cowboy. So a cowboy Rex, a Pecos Bill Rex. All right. Yes. All right. I got two <laughs> E's on that. Yes. All right, Sam. I'm ready. All right, and go. Okay, we'll start off with the cowboy hat, and we'll do this. We'll give him a little bit of that, and then we'll have a dinosaur here, a mouth and teeth, and he's just kind of chilling. And what's he doing? He's got a bandana around his neck, and he's holding with his very small dino arms a guitar. And you don't say guitar when you're talking Ten about seconds. dinos. You say guitar. And look, he's playing a tune, and here's his legs. How am I doing, Samantha? Two seconds. Three, two. One, did it again. It's good. Get my uh, <laughs> exercise in for the day. Well, yeah. this is one on. But uh, yeah, we got a bandana, we got a cowboy hat, we got a guitar, I'm sorry, a guitar. And in the background, you can't really tell what that is, but he's in the mountains, so that's a mountain. <laughs> there we go, Michael. Thank you, man. That was fun. I love how this has turned into like this... Uh, <laughs> spontaneous like high stake drawing challenge this is great yeah it's fun well are there while any we're other reading... questions about books that i could talk about or yeah. um i've been doing these drawing challenges until the cows come home that's another <laughs> no Texas. more questions at the moment i did put a link um to all of brady's books so if you'd like to check out the others you don't have to just check out louie and bear um we do have oh, them in stock yeah. Louie and Bear, it, it came out just uh, today, Saturday, so Friday, Thursday. It only it came out four days ago. It just came out on Wednesday. So uh, the book is brand new. And uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys love the – it's an adventure. It's a silly, funny adventure about friendship and ultimately um, the lesson is doing what's right. You know, sometimes doing the right thing is not the easy thing. It's the harder thing to do. But that's the uh, predicament that Louie and Bear find themselves in, that's in good. this book. I resonate with Bear because I love burritos. Yeah, I love burritos, too. I love burritos. Um, I and love I'm going to get a copy too. of that for my nephew, so he will love that. Thank you, um, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> of course. It's, it's awesome. I love it. Thank we do you. have a question um, from Monkfish, which is, um, and which this is Monkfish. Monkfish. And I which love of, how energetic she is. <laughs> which of your friends inspire you? Which of my friends inspire me? You know, that's another great question. I've had, I've been blessed in my life to have a lot of good friends. Um, I moved out here from Texas after I graduated college and um, left a lot of friends at home. 
uh, a lot of friends and they still live there and I'm still friends with them. But since I've been here in California, I've made a whole new group of friends and uh, I have some really close buds that um, are kind of like, you know, adult versions of Louie and Bear. We, we pal around together and uh, support each other. And, you know, friendships are important. I really believe that you have your family and you have your friends and both are, are very necessary to be happy and healthy. So I have a bunch of buddies out here. Um, one in particular that I'm, I'm awesome buds with is a, is a dude named Tyler. And he's just really silly and my kids love him. My wife loves him. Um, yeah. So I'd say there's a dude named Tyler who I'm buds with out here. That's special. It is special. I he's agree. Special. It's necessary. <laughs> and um, can you tell us a little bit about like anything that's coming up next? I could. Um, I have giving anything away. Sure. Yes. Um, so the fun thing about Louie and Bear is that it um, is it's a series. Um, so there's right now there's two books. The other book I am still working on, but it's very, very close to being done. And it will come out in July of 2022. And the really cool thing about Louie and Bear, the sequel to Louie and Bear in the, any, in the Land of Anything Goes, is that as a story, it literally picks up right where this one left off, um, almost by the second. So you have to wait a little bit, six months to read the story, but as soon as you do, it picks right up, right off, and it's just like a rocket shooting to the moon. It, it just, the story kicks into gear. There's a lot of new um, aliens, a lot of new um villains and it's it's action-packed and really silly as well um and then i have another book i'm working on another uh children's book um so that one i think comes out i don't know when that comes out i'm in the middle of working on that one so but as far as louis and bear there's one more book it's coming out in six months that's me knocking on wood because i love louis and bear and i want to keep the uh the party going with those two guys. I would, I would, I would write these guys and draw these guys for the rest of my life. I just mm -hmm. love them that much. That's awesome. And um, when you're getting Louie and Bear, when you're buying your copy, you can also pre-order the next one. That's right. The, do the, have that. The, the second book is available for pre-order. So yes, yeah. thank you, Sam. A <laughs> you're welcome. Good, uh, bit of information. <laughs> yes. And it's all right there in that link I shared in the chat area. So awesome. Um, it's easy to find. And well, if no one else has any other drawing challenges, um, it's a Saturday. And um, we'll let you go enjoy your day, Brady, with your family. Thank you. Uh, I can say something real quick. Yeah, absolutely. I want to thank you guys at Froman's for having me because. Uh, Y'all have been fantastic and supportive and fun and cool and really a dream to kind of work with as far as promoting my newest graphic novel. So thank you guys That's because this has been, it's been an absolute joy and a blast. And, and also I'm all about supporting local bookstores, which is very important because mm -hmm. everything is so easily accessible online and actually going to a bookstore and getting lost in a bookstore in the shelves of books is something that um, I think is a wonderful experience and I can't recommend highly enough. So I agree. You. And I, I agree. And I don't just agree because I work at one. I genuinely have loved bookstores all of my life. And when I travel, I go to different ones and it really is the best. I, mean, I, could sit, I could sit in a bookstore for hours and spend way too much money, but it's good for the bookstore. <laughs> it is good for the bookstore. Um, but thank you so much, Brady. I'm glad you had a great experience with us. It was a joy to have you and super fun. Congratulations again on Louie and Bear and all thank your you. other amazing books. And thank you everyone at home for joining us and being so engaged with us. Um, because it's virtual, it's really nice to know you're all here with us. So thank you so much. Thank you guys. I appreciate the questions and um, this was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have a great rest of your weekend.